So this morning we're going to do some testing of pups with chickens in novel, a novel situation for them. So there are going to be four blush pups coming out here. They're six months old. Um, they've never seen chickens walking around outside. They've been in the chicken coop um, with us a few times. But I'm going to use this opportunity to also talk about what basic training ought to look like for new owners of pups of this age. And one of the things that I would like you to watch for is something I've given a name, which is the training triangle. And it is simply this. The dog does a behavior. The handler marks the behavior, either by saying yes or by using a clicker. The handler reinforces the behavior. So there's the three pieces of the triangle. Now what that does is a few things. One is the marker tells the dog that exactly the d behavior he was doing is what he's getting paid for. So you can isolate a certain behavior and let the dog know that you'd like to see more of that. So instead of saying, have a nice day, you can say, have, I don't know, that's a poor example. But anyway, um, I'll see about working on that. Um, the other thing is that's really important with that triangle is Pavlov's dog. When you do that, you connect yourself to the reinforcer. You connect yourself to the behavior and to the reinforcer, the good thing that the dog likes. So you just, you just partnered yourself in the dog's mind to, the, to a good thing. So there are lots of benefits to training that way. Conversely, while I'm thinking of it, if you see a dog that's about to get laid out by livestock or shocked by an electric fence, don't speak. Don't look at the dog. Distance yourself from that. Turn around. When the dog is past that, you can turn back and say, wow, that was really, the, that was the pits. I'm really sorry about that and, and start again. But you don't connect yourself to negative points either because even without the marker and reinforcement, um, that's a bad thing. That, that makes a, a connection to the dog that, with you that you don't want. So when Chris is handling this pup, these are young pups, relatively speaking. Um, and she will use the clicker and marker, or the clicker and reinforcement in a couple of ways. One is she's going to identify the behaviors for the dog that she likes, but she's also going to be using the mark and reinforcement um, technique to increase the pup's confidence because that's an emotional reset. Every time that clicker happens, something good has followed it for all of the dog's life. So when he hears that, he perks up. So even if he was worried about something a minute ago, when he hears that clicker, he knows something good is gonna follow and he'll relax and he'll give, he'll offer behavior more freely. He'll be more comfortable because Krista has let him know that there's an opportunity here for him to earn a reward from her. So it isn't about bribery. It isn't about that you have to have food. It's about that when you're trying to do, you're trying to teach a new behavior or reinforce an early behavior, or you're a new owner with a dog that you don't have training history with, using the mark and reward system builds relationship. Now it builds training relationships. So if you live with your dog and you cuddle your dog and you're sweet with it, you are a partner with the dog. You're, they're your friends. If you click and reinforce, you are building a training history and that is a different thing. It's more powerful. Both need to happen, but it's more powerful. So I'd like you to think about this. Every time you see Krista click and then pay that dog, think about chucking a dime in a bank account because that's what's happening for her with that pup. And the other thing I'd like you to think about is when she finally gets the pup in here and he's in the barn and looking a little uneasy, which is why he's not at the gate. Sorry about that. Um, oh, lost my train of thought. Um, oh, um, watch the counter because watch how long the training session is. You'll be surprised at how short it is, I think. People tend to think that they're going to go out and train the dogs and it's like dog obedience class where you're at the class for an hour. An appropriate training session with pups like this shouldn't be more than five minutes and oftentimes it's two or three minutes. Um, so, and that's decided upon by the dog. And also in the midst of being out here with the pups, Krista, she will follow the behavior, she'll let the dog lead where they go. So she's not gonna tell him where he has to go for the most part. And whenever he offers something that she can reinforce, she will mark and reinforce it. The pup will lead her around. He'll go where he wants to go. He'll take breaks. Um, he'll, you know, stargaze and look around and then he'll be back on task and do perimeter stuff again, and which is payable behavior. So even if we're out here five minutes, it's not five minutes of solid training. 
And if you were going to be a really intensive trainer of new dogs, you might do a situation like this twice a day. No more than that. That's all it is. The rest of it is inherent to living with the dogs and a variety of circumstances that I will try to either write about or, or video. So I'm going to go rescue Krista from wherever she is with that pup. He may not be one that wants to come out here today and we'll pick it up where I left off.